Get you to set yourself on a four point. So you've just got your roller beside your body, okay? We're just gonna go into some really nice, easy thread the needles from your four point position. And um, then just a couple of easy little extensions over the roller as well. So just be mindful of how your shoulders are feeling and stuff. If um, on the extension side of things, it gets a little bit stiff and, and sticky. But yeah, just set yourself shoulders over the top of the wrists in your first position. Have the roller set onto the right or left hand side of your body, it doesn't matter which one. And all we'll do is take the hand off the side, furthest from the roller, and drive underneath your body. Okay, what I want you to do on this first couple of rounds is stay so that you've got the real stability and straightness through that arm that's not threading, okay? So I'm using my left arm to thread. I'm really staying very stable and sturdy and locked out pretty much straight through my right side. So that all I'm doing is I'm just trying to roll the left side of my rib cage down towards the floor and not even worry initially about opening back out either, okay? So just take yourself into five or six threads under and then back. So breath out as you go to your end range. And again, don't allow your head and your neck to do a huge amount of rotating either. Just really slowly and steadily trying to unwind that spine first off. Take it across to the other side, same thing. So again, I'll just set it off here just so you can maybe see that slight different angle. Now I'm just gonna be working a really strong and straight left arm as my right arm tucks under my body. And again, I'm working with that breath out to take me to that end range. So it doesn't matter if you've got a shorter roller or a longer one with this one or with the extension that we're gonna do really. So that should suit pretty much anyone. If you go back to your first side again, this time we are staying with that same idea of being strong and long through the straight stabilizing arm, but we are gonna add that extra little rotation on the upwards phase this time. So if you start with the thread, start by tucking under. And on the reverse of that, come through into that open twist. But again, don't just throw the shoulder and the arm back towards the ceiling. Work so that it's only really that rib cage that's gonna do the rotation and take the shoulder to about in line with the front of the chest, okay? So if you were here, you're not just throwing that shoulder back on either side, right? Just open to the point where you're fairly neutral through the front of the body and then tuck under. So again, it's only limited by what the rib cage is doing as opposed to how much of a flare and an open you can get on that other arm. Hopefully that makes sense. If you haven't already, take a switch across to the other side, set it up the same way. Again, if you find that that arm does just wanna fly away and float out through there, what I'd say do, which is a good option, is just bring the hand to the back of the head instead as you come out of that thread. So I thread to my end range under my body, but then you can just take that hand that's threaded to the back of the head so that the elbow takes you wider instead. But again, if you're going this way, just be cautious of the elbow just kind of winging itself around as well. Again, all I want you to focus on is it being this thoracic part that's gonna be moving first up, okay? Cool. Good one. Now from there, we're gonna increase that range a little bit. So we are gonna to start to soften into the elbow of that stabilizing arm, okay? 
So that tuck under will now go that little bit further. We will travel that little bit further because we will soften this elbow a little bit more. Again, don't necessarily go straight into that wide opening motion if it doesn't feel like it works for you. Again, as I soften my right elbow with my left arm tucking underneath my body, I do just start to feel that deeper, more strong stretch, particularly in and around my left shoulder blade. So again, take your time and switch under to your other side when you're ready. And again, same thing, when your right arm tucks under the body, that left elbow can soften. And again, you might feel that stretch a little bit stronger in and around that kind of rotator cuff shoulder blade region now. Do try and keep your hips as static as you can through this as well. So you're not favoring into the hips and shifting across into the hips as you go either. Good. So then your final one that I want you to do is just taking the roller out all together and just working into what is essentially going to be your full end range by flexing the elbow on that stabilizing side. Thread through and back and again the the challenge or the, the, the possibility of taking yourself to a full flat arm onto the floor that's tucked under the body is one that can be there for you. Again, working with your breath out to take you to that end range will really help as well. It just helps with that. Uh, exhale side of things, it just gets rid of all of that extra oxygen and that extra air out of the lungs and the diaphragm as you spiral everything up. Same on the other side as well, tuck right under. Again, your version might be totally different to mine if that's your full version. Don't force anything that doesn't feel like it works for you. Cool, good one. So what I want you to do from there, bring your roller back in so that what we can do is we can go into some extensions of this thoracic part of our spine, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set the roller and I'm gonna put myself with it on around about the bottom of my shoulder blades. Where I'm gonna be is hands at the back of my head so that I stay nice and neutral through the length of my entire spine, okay? So I'm not just throwing my head and neck back here. What I'm trying to do is slowly just extend out over the top of the roller without losing this neutral neck head position. So all I'm doing here is I'm just allowing myself to arch my back over the roller. My hands are supporting my head so that it's not just my head and neck that are going, right? Again, the roll is set here at about that heart rate monitor bra strap line. And then from there, slowly creep yourself up your spine. So you're going to be about middle of the shoulder blades now. And again, look at that range where the spine and the head and the neck stay neutral and you're just able to extend that little bit, arch that little bit over. Again, if that's aggressive and you don't necessarily like that whole heap, what I'd say do is just have an easy little roll into this region instead. Again, if you find that being over and extending over the roller is too much, then just take a nice easy little roll instead. If you're okay with that extension, Again, have another little shift so you're up towards the top of the shoulder blades now. Again, the, the actual range itself should reduce as you come further up your spine. So don't expect to be getting the same extension as you were that little bit lower down the back. And again, don't allow yourself to just 
start to throw the head and the neck back out of their neutral alignment either. Awesome. Just slowly start to work your way back through position two and finish off at position one. So you're sort of middle of the shoulder blades for a second time here. And then we'll finish off again at the first point of the three that we've done there. So again, about that bra strap, about that heart rate monitor line, just underneath the shoulder blades. Cool guys. Good stuff. So the last little thing I want you to do, again, if it feels like it's something that's achievable for you, is just go into a little child's pose using your foam roller. Again, that's if you've got one, right? Otherwise, you can just get hands out into that extended position in front of you, no trouble. So all I'm going to do is just sit with my hips back to my heels and have my hands set with my thumbs up to the ceiling through this child's pose. And again, I'm just gonna feel for this stretch and this length in between my shoulder blades while I'm here. If you're just going on the floor, all I'd say do as well to create that extra little bit of height is just come onto your fingertips. So again, depending on where you are, hands on the roller or hands on the floor, and just looking for that stretch, that sensation in and around that mid upper back sort of region from there. If you want to then do just a couple more of those thread the needles just to see how things have loosened up. Great. Just to compare. This is definitely one of those stickiest parts of my body, so that gives me a whole heap of freedom straight away, really. So hopefully you guys have got some similar benefits. Thank you.